Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about political tension that is rising rapidly between one of the biggest oil exporters in the world and the world's biggest country in terms of population. And for a change, I'm not talking about Russia or China today. I'm talking about what's going on between Canada and India. Canada has one of the largest populations of Sikhs outside of India. And in July of this year, a Sikh activist who is actually a Canadian citizen was murdered in Canada. And accusations have now been raised in Canada that the Indian authorities were aware of this murder and potentially could have had some involvement. And this incident isn't the first time that India and Canada have clashed over the Sikh community in Canada. So in today's episode, we'll have a look at what the rising tension is all about. We'll have a look at who Hardeep Singh Najjar is, who's the activist who was killed. We'll talk briefly about what Sikhism is and why there's tension between the Indian state and the Sikhs in India. We'll then go on to talk about why the assassination of President Gandhi in 1984 is causing tension between Canada and India. We'll have a look at what the trading implications of this are for the two nations, because we're talking about the fifth largest and the eighth largest countries in the world from a GDP point of view. So this could potentially be a really powerful coalition, particularly right now where we've got a split globally in terms of oil exporters. Russia has obviously been targeting India heavily over the course of the last 12 months or so, and the exports from Russia to India have increased significantly. So there's actually a large opportunity here for Canada to be able to develop its relationship further with India and vice versa. But the tension between the two countries is potentially going to undermine all of that. And then finally today I'll wrap up with my summaries to what I think is likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months and what the implications of this are for India, Canada and the global economy. But before we get started on all of that, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that's posted comments recently saying that they're happy to see me back on screen. I'm happy to be here as well, so it's great that we're all happy. And if you would like to see more face-to-face -face videos that are not being posted on YouTube, please check out my Patreon channel where you'll also get early access to videos and you won't have to watch any annoying adverts. But if you don't like Patreon and you'd like to support the channel, please have a look in the description below where you'll find links to buymeacoffee.com as well as my YouTube super thanks and membership scheme. Canada said on Monday it had credible information linking Indian government agents to the murder of a Sikh separatist leader in British Columbia in June, an accusation India dismissed as absurd and motivated. Canada also said it had expelled a senior Indian intelligence official but gave no details. The separatist leader, Hardeep Singh Najjar, was shot dead outside a Sikh temple in Surrey, British Columbia, on June 18. Najjar supported a Sikh homeland in the form of an independent Khalistani state and was labelled a terrorist by India in 2020, according to Indian media. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Monday did not directly accuse India of being involved. However, he did say his country's security agencies had been pursuing allegations of links between Najjar's death and India's government. Any involvement of a foreign government in the killing of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil is an unacceptable violation of our sovereignty. It is contrary to the fundamental rules by which free, open and democratic societies conduct themselves. As you would expect, we've been working closely and coordinating with our allies on this very serious matter. Moninda Singh, director of the Canadian Sikh Coalition, said Monday his community wanted to see what Ottawa would do next. We have a mixed kind of emotion right now. Uh, that's kind of uh, one is we're acknowledging that Canada has acknowledged India as an actor and done it from Parliament. Uh, and on the other side, we're wondering what the next steps are going to be as well. So I think there's mixed feelings at the moment. Canada has the highest population of Sikhs outside their home state of Punjab in India. It's also been the site of many demonstrations that have irked India. Monday's announcement will likely further strain bilateral ties, with New Delhi already unhappy that Canadian authorities did not crack down on Sikh protesters. The two countries were earlier trying to hammer out a trade deal by the end of this year, but have now frozen talks. Canada gave few details, while India cited, quote, certain political developments. Hardeep Singh Najjar was born in India on the 11th of October 1977. 
but emigrated to Canada in 1997, where he worked as a plumber. It's reported that he made a refugee claim to the Canadian authorities, which was rejected. However, he subsequently married a Canadian national who sponsored him to immigrate as her spouse, and the couple went on to have two sons. As well as working as a plumber, Nijar was a prominent figure in the proposed independence of Sikhs from the Indian state. The Sikh separatist movement dates back to the early 1970s, when an advertisement was published in the New York Times, proposing the establishment of an independent country called Khalistan. Hardeep Singh Najjar was alleged by the government of India to be the leader of the pro-Khalistan group Khalistan Tiger Force and also the leader of the Canadian branch of Sikhs for Justice. In 2018, the government of India accused Nijar of multiple targeted killings in India. However, Nijar vehemently denied these claims. In February 2018, the Indian authorities gave the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau a list of most wanted persons that included Nijar's name. And on the 13th of April, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police briefly detained him for questioning, but released him within 24 hours without any charges. In July 2020, India designated Nijar as a terrorist under the Unlawful Activities Act, and in September 2020, the National Investigation Agency seized his assets in India. On the 18th of June, Nijar was shot dead in his truck by two masked gunmen in the parking lot of the Guru Nanak Sikh Gurdwara in Surrey, Canada. He was found in his vehicle with gunshot wounds, and in the aftermath of his death, certain Sikh groups alleged that Indian diplomats played a role in his assassination. Sikhism is a religion that originated in the late 15th century in the Punjab region of the Indian subcontinent and is based on the revelation of Guru Nanak. Male Sikhs generally have Singh, which means lion, and female Sikhs generally have Kaur, which means princess, as their last name. These unique last names were given by the Gurus to allow Sikhs to stand out and also as an act of defiance to India's caste system, which the Gurus were against. All Sikhs undergo baptism by Kanda, an initiation ceremony known as Khalsa, and from the day of their initiation, they must at all times have on their bodies the five Ks. The five Ks are Kesh, which is uncut hair kept covered by a turban, Kara, an iron or steel bracelet, Kirpan, a dagalite sword tucked either into a gatra strap or karmakasa waistband, Kachera, which is a cotton undergarment, and Kanga, which is a small wooden comb often wore within the hair. The Punjab region of the Indian subcontinent has been the historic homeland of the Sikhs and was ruled by the Sikhs for significant parts of the 18th and 19th centuries. It's estimated that there are around 30 million Sikhs globally, with the highest percentage being in India, but the largest populations overseas are based in Canada, the United States and the United Kingdom. The movement to declare independence for Sikhs and to establish the country of Khalistan was started in the 1970s. However, the movement became high profile in the 1980s and in June 1985, Air India Flight 182 was bombed by Baba Khalsa, a pro-Khalistani terrorist organisation. However, in the 1990s, the insurgency abated and the movement failed to reach its objective due to multiple reasons, including heavy police crackdowns on separatists, divisions among Sikhs and loss of support from the Sikh population. However, various pro-Khalistan groups, both political and militant, remain committed to the separatist movement. And it was claimed that Hardeep Singh Najjar was organising a referendum among Sikhs to vote on whether or not they wanted independence before the time of his death. In June 2023, India's foreign minister hit out at Canada for allowing a float in a parade depicting the 1984 assassination of Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi by her bodyguards, which was perceived to be glorification of violence by Sikh separatists. Indira Gandhi was assassinated in 1984 by two Sikh bodyguards after she allowed the storming of the holiest Sikh temple aimed at flushing out Sikh separatists who demanded an independent homeland to be known as Khalistan. The storming of the temple angered Sikhs around the world and the death toll in the attack remains disputed, with Indian authorities putting it in the hundreds and Sikh groups putting it in the thousands. Canada's High Commissioner for India also condemned the incident at a parade by Sikh activists in the Canadian city of Brampton. A video circulated on the internet showed a tableau from the parade featuring Gandhi wearing a blood-stained white sari with her hands up as turban-clad men pointed guns at her. The poster behind the scene read Revenge. And at the G20 summit in New Delhi at the start of September, Indian Prime Minister 
Narendra Modi conveyed strong concerns about the protests to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And an official statement by the Indian authorities said, They are promoting secessionism and inciting violence against Indian diplomats, damaging diplomatic premises and threatening the Indian community in Canada and their places of worship. On the 1st of September, Canada announced that it had paused talks for a proposed trade treaty with India, just three months after the two nations said they aimed to seal an initial agreement this year. Canadian Trade Minister Mary Ng has postponed a trade mission to India which was planned for October, which has further intensified the diplomatic divide between the two countries. On September 18, 2023, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau stated that Canadian intelligence had identified a link between the murder and the Indian government and called upon India to cooperate with Canada in investigating the murder. In response to the alleged murder, the Canadian Foreign Minister Melanie Jolly ordered the expulsion of a top Indian diplomat in Canada who headed the operations of the Research and Analysis Wing, India's external intelligence agency in Canada. India expelled the Canadian diplomat the next day in a tit-for-tat move and denied the claims as absurd and all trade discussions are currently on hold. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, as I mentioned at the start of the video, we're currently in a very unusual period in terms of trading relationships. Because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there has been a split down the middle of the world. The West no longer wants to deal with Russia, and Russia has desperately been trying to increase its trading relations with the Far East. And over the course of the last 12 months, Russia has significantly increased its oil exports to both India and China. Now, India has remained entirely neutral on the Russian-Ukraine war situation, so it's happy to carry on dealing with Russia. And actually, if you look back over the last 10 years, the trade between the two countries has been very minimal. So it's only really been since Russia's invasion of Ukraine that India has started buying large quantities of oil. And the main driver for that has been the discounts that Russia has been offering to India. India, quite honestly, has said, we will do what's right for our economy. And if we can buy cheap oil from Russia, then that works for us. And obviously that has been happening. But from Canada's point of view, Canada is a major exporter. In 2022, some reports state that Canada was the second largest exporter, overtaking Russia for the first time in terms of the value of the oil, because Russia was selling a lot of its oil at a discount. And there is clearly an opportunity here for Canada to be able to extend its relationship with countries like India. And over the course of the last year or so, there has been a lot of talk about improving those trade relations and coming to some form of agreement. But unfortunately, over the course of the last few months, the political arguments have started to derail the trade discussions. As we saw earlier in the video, in June 2023, India was extremely unhappy that the Canadian authorities allowed a float depicting the assassination of Indira Gandhi in 1984, and they lodged official complaints with Canada. And then one month later, a Canadian citizen was murdered on Canadian soil. And obviously that has now caused a huge political divide between the two countries. Now, as it stands right now, Canada don't have proof that the Indian authorities were behind that assassination. But there are a lot of rumours circulating. And as we saw earlier in the video, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, has stated that they are currently investigating whether there is any truth behind these rumours. And if there is, I think we're going to see a major diplomatic issue between the two countries. And unfortunately, from both Canada and India's point of view, that could derail the trade discussions. Now, in terms of looking at the bigger picture here, as I said right at the start of the video, India is now the fifth largest economy in the world from a GDP point of view, and it's also the largest country from a population point of view. And over the course of the next five years, India's population is forecast to continue increasing. So India has large purchasing power, and therefore it represents a good potential trading partner for Canada. Now, Canada is blessed with lots of natural resources. It has an abundance of oil and wood and lots of other natural resources. So it makes absolute sense for these two countries to come together and increase their trading relations. But unfortunately, because Canada has a large population of Sikhs, and some of that Sikh community have been seeking independence from India since the 1970s. And of course, independence is always a very difficult topic and represents a minefield. 
For the host nation, they are always pushing back against independence. However, there is always an argument for indigenous and religious groups to have independence. And it's very difficult to be able to get a political balance on this. And I don't think over the course of the next three to six months, we're going to see any resolution in terms of the discussions between the Sikhs and the Indian authorities. So what we've got right now is a political powder keg. And if the Canadian authorities do decide that they've got enough evidence to point the finger firmly at the Indian authorities, then we could have a major political fallout, which would be devastating in terms of the level of trade between the two countries and would likely derail any future negotiations. And one of the issues from Canada's point of view is that their pension funds have around $70 billion of investments directly in India right now. Now, hopefully none of those investments would be affected by any political fallout, but there is always a risk with any overseas investment that if there's a diplomatic or political falling out, that those investments could be at risk. So the ongoing accusations between India and Canada obviously represents bad news for both of those countries. But when you take a step back and look at what the impact of this is on the global economy, the more trade that's done globally, the better it is for the global economy. That is how you get the global economy increasing in value and everybody benefits from that because of the domino effect. Because if India and Canada are doing more trade, earning more GDP, then they're likely to do more trade with other countries as well as they expand and develop their own economies. But if we're seeing a contraction of both of those economies, that would have a negative domino effect or ripple effect. But there is also a bigger picture political issue here, because if India is not doing deals with Canada to buy oil, it's more likely to turn to Russia and buy even more oil from Russia. And at the moment, we've got this new east-west divide that is developing across the globe. Russia is trying to develop its relationships with China, India and lots of other communist and Far East countries. And there is a potential that a new Cold War could be created here. And if Canada and India do fall out and don't come to a resolution where they can actually do some more trade, then that is potentially playing into the hands of Russia, enabling them to do more trade with India, to increase their own income and to develop that Cold War situation further. So the overall summary of today's video is that the political tension and accusations between India and Canada are bad news for both of those countries, but could also represent bad news for the global economy. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and here's something to put a smile on your face.